Good morning, everyone. I'm so thankful that you've made the choice to join us today as we um, study God's Word together. And as we're doing this 40 days of prayer, um, the worshiper's prayer life, um, this last focus is called a benediction of praise. Last Sunday, we studied our third lesson on the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer, while focusing on the part of the prayer that says, and do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And so today, as we continue our church-wide emphasis, um, we are looking at this final section of the prayer. And so look with me again at the Lord's Prayer, and let's read this together in Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Let's read it out loud together. Therefore, you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today we're going to focus our time together on studying this final part of verse 13. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is fitting for us to conclude our study on the Lord's Prayer with this benediction. And a benediction is basically a blessing. Because without this added blessing or benediction on the end, um, we would be ending our prayer focus with the evil one. And that's how it would end. So with this benediction, we are able to refocus our attention back on our Father. And the reason we find these words in brackets um, is because most scholars tell us that the earliest known manuscripts did not include this benediction. It was probably added um, when the early church began to pray this prayer in public worship. And so they added this blessing. Warren Wearsby points out in his book, On Earth as It Is in Heaven, the Didache, the teaching of the Twelve Apostles, that it was a second century uh, local church manual. And it reads, For thine is the power and the glory forever. The most, most Bible scholars point out that this benediction is actually based on the words of David in 1 Chronicles 29 during the commissioning of Solomon to build the temple of God. And as you go back and read um, 1 Chronicles 29, you will hear these same um, type words used in that um, text in um, 1 Chronicles. So during the benediction, we have the opportunity to end our study with praising God for several important things uh, as his people. So as his people, we are number one, our first focus for this is to praise our father for his rule over his province. So we're going to pray for your kingdom, for yours is the kingdom. Um, when we pray this, we are acknowledging that the Lord is in control. He is king and ruler over all things. Therefore, as citizens in his kingdom, we yield our lives to his will. Too often we live our lives as if we're in control. If you have the illusion that you are in control of your life, it's probably only because you've never really faced anything very frightening or anything um, really bad in your life. If that hasn't happened to you yet, you may have the illusion that you have some type of control over life. Um, but that is an illusion. We live our lives a lot of times as like we... Um, like this kingdom belongs to us and not to the to our Father. We live this way and we find ourselves falling out of fellowship with God and with His people. And a lot of times we find ourselves feeling disillusioned and hopeless um, at the end of that. Charles Spurgeon said, When you go through a trial, the sovereignty of God is the pillow upon which you lay your head. And as I, you know, thought about that with so many things in our life that truly are out of our control, um, realizing that God is sovereign is what allows us to have peace in the midst of trials and storms and tragedy. Um, because of if we once we realize that and we accept that God is sovereign, He is over all things. He is all powerful, all knowing. 
He is sovereign. Either he is sovereign or he's not. And so if we put our faith and trust in him that he is in control, um, that allows us to have peace no matter what's going on because we have to trust that he loves us and he knows what's best for us and he knows how the story ends. He sees the big picture and we have to have faith in that. So some of the questions are, what is the root cause for us living like we are in control? What do you think makes us um, live as if we're in control? And think about that for just a minute. As I was thinking, um, reflecting myself on this, what might cause us to live like we're in control, sometimes it's just pride. Um, for some reason, we have this feeling that we can do it on our own. We work hard enough or uh, try hard enough or, um, you know, we just have pride that we can do it on our own. Other times, I think it's uh, more selfishness because we want to be in control. Um, the idea that someone else is in control of our very life um, is a little scary. Um maybe even um, just our own selfish desires like we want our life to go the way we want it to go and we're kind of a little bit um, selfish in in that thinking that we can actually uh, control the outcome or control what happens to us which is like I said before it's an illusion the next question says what are some things that we do to prove that we often live like the kingdom belongs to us instead of to God the Father. So what do we do that's proof that we're living our lives like the, this is our kingdom. We own our, we own our own lives. This is our world. So think about some things in your own life or the way that you see people living their life. What are some things that is evident that we are not putting God on the throne? As I thought about this, I thought um, one thing I think we do is we fail to pray for, for God's guidance, and that proves if we don't pray and ask for his guidance and ask for his direction, then that just proves that we really don't believe he's in control or think that he has the power. Another thing I thought about is we fail to read his word for instruction. We just kind of go off on our own uh, path in direction without seeking God's word because he has left his word to us as an instruction book and a guide for living and when we don't follow the guide he's given us we're basically saying I'm gonna do it my way I think my way is better um, we don't have faith that 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 what he has in his word is is what's best for us when um, ultimately you know that is he loves us and cares for us and knows what's best for us beyond what we we know and his ways are higher than our ways uh, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and uh, when we don't study his word and seek him in prayer then I would say that in my mind is proof in my life um, the third question is what makes us think we are in control of our lives when in fact we aren't <clears throat> What makes us think we're in control when in fact we're really not? Again, I think that goes back to arrogance, um, thinking that we're self-sufficient, thinking that we can do it on our own um, through you know, hard work or positive thoughts or um, just or, you know, other people. Other thing I would say would be ignorance or foolishness. Um, we're foolish. Um, when we think that we're in control. In Psalms 103, 19, we read this about the Lord's rule over his kingdom. The Lord has established his throne in the heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Proverbs 19, 21 says, many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. So those scripture verses just prove to us that, you know, we can make all the plans we want, but the Lord's purpose will prevail, and he is truly sovereign and Lord of all. 
The next praise focus we have is praise our Father for his power. It says, for yours is the kingdom and the power. The word power here is sometimes translated in other ways like mighty works, miracles, might, or strength. The word is used over a hundred times in the New Testament. And it shows up in the scriptures like Ephesians 3, 20 through 21. There Paul is praised. He's praised our God and said, Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Our Father is truly the one who reigns with all power. He is no figurehead. He is the ruler over all. This power we are this power we are to praise God for is the power that raised Jesus from the dead. The same power is available to us who are saved by the Lord. Paul said it like this in Romans 8:11. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his spirit who lives in you. Wow, that's a powerful promise. Jesus said this to his disciples in Mark 10, 27. He said, all things are possible with God. This means that with us, there are things that are impossible. There are many things in this life we cannot do. Um, sometimes we tell our children, you can be anything you want to be. Well, probably not. You know, if you max out at five foot five, you're not going to be, you know, an NBA basketball star. Um, you know, you probably aren't going to be a brain surgeon, no, you know, if you don't have certain grades or skills, no matter how hard you work. Um, you cannot control your health at all times. There, while there are things you can do, um, to eat healthy, to exercise, to do all those things. But, you know, we all know people that that follow all those good things, and yet 100% of us are going to die. We can't control everything. Uh, we can eat healthy and, and, and live a great life and still, be, uh, still experience sickness or an illness or a disease that we have absolutely no control over. There are many things in this life we don't have answers for. We don't know why things happen. Um, there's so many and things that that happen and there's no ex explanation for it. Um, when loved ones pass away unexpectedly, um, especially you know young people, um, the loss of a child, um, people that can't have a child and want one so badly, or people that have children that don't take care of them. Um, there's just, you know, hunger in the world. There's violence in the world. There's so many things in our world, and we don't have the answers for those. Um, and we often live our lives, we're filled with this impossible because our power is limited. And if we dwell in we, on what we cannot do, and if we dwell on our lack of power in ourselves, we can become hopeless. Um, but Jesus said, all things are possible with God. And so this is really directing us back to where is the source of our strength and power. It's only through the power of God in us that we can live and have our being and do anything. And when we step outside of that and lose our focus of where our strength comes from, um, that's when we fall. So what are some areas of, in your, our lives where we realize how limited our power really is? Think about your life and what are some things that really pops up in your head and you realize you have no power or strength. When I thought about this, I thought of power over, you know, life or, you know, keeping uh, the ones that we love with us. We don't have that power. And I also thought about... Um, health you know we pray for a lot of people in our church that have cancer or other illnesses or um, you know it could be heart disease it could be cancer it could be different things that they're facing and some uh, are terminal and you know um, those things we don't have power over we can pray and God says he with him all things are possible and so um, 
that prevents us from feeling hopeless because he is a great physician and he is sovereign and um, miracles still happen. And so we can believe in that. Um, but mostly we can trust him that, you know, his power and his um, goodness is perfect. What are some areas in your life right now where you need to see God's power work at work in your own life? Where do you need to see God's power at work in your own life? It could be with relationships, finances. Um, it could be in your with your health. What are some areas in our church where we need to see God's power at work? Is it through our Sunday school outreach? Is it our evangelism and, and sharing the gospel with others in our community, in our neighborhood? Is it the way that we um, are willing to be open to um, following God's will for our lives, offering true um, worship? What are some areas where we need to see God's power at work in our church? The next um, praise focus is to praise our Father for His preeminence. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. In week four, day four, reading in the book, The Worshipper's Prayer Life by Dwayne Moore, some of the most prominent words for glory in the Bible are nouns. The glory that is His is not ultimately something God gets, as though more glory could be added to Him. Is not something he needs and it is not something he does glory is who God is it's the sum total of all of his attributes his acts his character he is glory as we acknowledge and focus on the praise and praise God for his glory he reveals more and more of himself to us the more we know of God the more we are transformed ourselves Paul said it like this in 2 Corinthians 3.18. We all, with unveiled faces, are looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord and are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. This is from the Lord, who is the Spirit. When we make it a priority of our Christian lives to walk with God, communicate with Him, and to live for Him, we will experience His glory in and through our lives as never before. When you read the word glory, what do you think of when you hear the word glory? When I thought of it, I thought of uh, when we teach kids um, during Bible school, um, the sign language for glory was, it was like a butterfly flying. And I thought about um, some of the songs that we've taught and it had that butterfly, you know, flying through and I thought of glory. Um, songs that have glory in them. What do you think of when you think of glory? I think of splendor, something magnificent, and beautiful. And I think of purity. I think of heavenly. What are some stories or examples from the Bible where God's glory was evident? Where are areas in your life where you see God's glory in your own life? How has God, um, God revealed his glory in your life? How about in our church? The next praise uh, focus is to praise our Father for his preeminence. Permanence, I'm sorry. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We forget that many of the issues of this life consume so much of our time, effort, and energy, and they're things that are temporary. Much of the things that cause us lots of anxiety and stress and worry are temporary. For this reason, we should love this word forever. Because while we live in a world that is characterized by temporary, we serve a God of permanence and eternity. 
we want things, you know, they say all good things must end and there's lots of different things um, that we think about with things being ending in this world. You know, every birthday gets us closer um, to, you know, the thoughts of, you know, the end of our life. Or we think about a vacation and uh, or being with our family Christmas and when all the presents are opened or a vacation and you're driving home and it's just um, it's kind of sad because everybody's going to go back to work in their lives and you've enjoyed that time together so much and it's coming to an end um, so when I think about permanence I'm, I'm a person that does not like change I really in my personal life and I've endured a lot of change and it has been extremely hard on me because I am one of these people that um, holds on to every little thing, you know, memories and, uh, you know, you know, little baby clothes and uh, all the kids' school work and just different things. Uh, I keep, you know, my great grandmother's things or things my mom gave me, and um, you know, I've, I've found that I hang on to things, and I really just like things to stay the way that they are, especially where I'm comfortable and happy, and I don't like change. But the sad reality and almost cruelty is we are in a world that is constantly changing and um, and that can be hard. Um, some change can be good, um, but when we're talking about uh, losing things that we love or letting go of things and experiences that, that we want to hold on to, um, it can be really traumatic. And so um, I think... You know, that was the one thing that, that I look forward to is forever. Um, not having to say goodbye. Not, uh, ha no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain, those kinds of things. So I'm thankful that we have a God that is faithful and that is, is un doesn't change. He's always the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so that brings me peace and hope, uh, knowing that, um, when things are restored that that forever is something that you know we won't have to uh, worry about goodbyes or in things ending um, prayer therefore is not a waste of our time um, prayer is an investment in eternity for example our prayers should include things that speak of our focus on eternity and on forever it says that we should set our minds on things above not on earthly things when we pray for lost family members, friends, or co-workers to be saved, we're praying about something that's forever. Um, as believers, we will enjoy heaven forever, it tells us in Psalms 23, 6. God's love endures forever, Psalms 136. God is forever faithful to us, Psalms 146, 6. The faithful will receive a crown of glory that will last forever, in 1 Corinthians 9, 25. We also know that God's word endures forever in 1 Peter 1.25. So all of these references to forever is a, is a huge comfort to our hearts. And it's God's will um, that things would be that way, that there would not be separation that we would have forever. In, this, in his book, Four Loves, C.S. Lewis said, All that is not eternal is eternally out of date. Have you made preparations for your forever? That's the most important question in all of our lives and in the lives of those, our friends and neighbors and those that we come in contact with is have you made plans for your forever? Have you shared with others closest to you about the love of Jesus to make sure they are prepared for their forever? So in conclusion, we've spent weeks talking about prayer. We have spent time praying. And so here's the question. Based on what we have learned and studied about prayer, think about three things that you can do, that you can change, or you can let God adjust in your life or in our life as a result of this study. And I know through reading um, through the book and through the prayers and the sermons that we've had, um, there's been a lot of conviction in my life and I know that there are so many things that I need to change, uh, so many things I need to do, so many ways I need to let God lead. But sometimes you can't, you know, you can't think of all the ways that you need to change and things that you need to do. 
But I challenge you to list three things and focus on those three things. Something that you can do personally or that you need to do. Something you need to change. Or how do you need to let God um, guide you in going forward. And I thank you for um, your time today. And I hope that, um, that this was um, beneficial to you and that it was encouraging. And um, I hope that you will be challenged uh, to seek God. Let's close with prayer. Dear God, I just thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. And I thank you that you are um, sovereign God. I thank you that it, things in this life are not dependent on us, on our desires and our will. And um, God, I just thank you that you are all-knowing and all-powerful and that you are God and that we are not. And God, I thank you for the way that you... Um, love us and I thank you for your holiness and your purity and your goodness and your love. God, I thank you that we can have faith and trust in the fact that you're permanent and that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God, that you will never leave us or forsake us. And God, I thank you for all these things, Lord. I thank you for this study and I pray for Dwayne more as he has written this book, Lord. I pray that you will use this study to reach um, other people all around the world, God, that um, through this study and through the power of your word, Lord, that lives would be changed, that people will be drawn closer to you, God. And we know that you love us and you want what's best for us. And God, just help us to humble ourselves and to seek you through prayer and through the reading of your word, Lord, so that we can honor you with our lives and bring glory to you God in the way that we live our lives and the way that we love others in Jesus name I pray amen thank you